Hey friends, thanks for joining us on the Changed Movement channel. Let's get started. Hey, it's Friday. We have our great okay, friend Gabriel Pagan joining us. And he is in his private office, the car in the parking lot. Very aesthetically pleasing. <laughs> Gorgeous. The lighting is great. <laughs> Sitting here in the glory. Amen. <clears throat> well, we, we tend to start by just asking people to share about 10 minutes of their story. I think you can give us a little of your background. Yeah. Um, so I'm a part of the change movement with you guys. Um, I've been free from uh, the lifestyle, um, following the Lord and praise God born again for eight years um, since October this October, which is awesome. Come on. Um, and I am just experiencing God in this time of my life in ways that I don't know how to say like mean more, but it's definitely a lot more grounding. It was like, I went through eight years of seeing the reality of God. And then I was like a whole different beginning of just being fathered and knowing the love of God in a deeper way. I don't know how to describe it other than that, but it's like everything was like, shoot. And now it's like a more, very more intimate. I want to say difficult season, but not in the sense of difficult. Like I was when I was dead. <laughs> so, um, but I grew up going to church and I can't say that I ever encountered God or knew a moment where I felt like he was speaking to me. So I definitely felt like my life was more based around my choices and choices are what got you to heaven and doing the right thing and keeping all the rules and the whole nine. And around the time I was eight or nine years old, I was exposed to sexual activity. Somebody tried teaching me how to masturbate and doing the whole shebang um, as much as an eight-year-old could do. And um, I just remember shortly after being exposed to pornography and that becoming kind of like the connector um, to what felt good at home because being at home never really felt good. Um, my dad, he didn't have a dad and his mom worked a lot. And so emotionally, I feel like there were some definite, definite hurdles for him as far as like, like intimacy towards me. He gave me what he had, you know, and I honor him for that. And my mom, she went through the ringer too. <laughs> um, so I didn't really feel like safe to process a lot of stuff for them. And growing up in a religious household, um, it tends to be a little bit more strict in the Bible belt. <laughs> so I just remember um, being very afraid of my dad's temper and um, very afraid of hell and not knowing that sex with men was bad because of seeing pornography and things being done to me. So uh, I was just talking to a friend about this the other day um, when I was sharing my story, but I can remember in this time of my life, like watching like superhero movies and then thinking like, this is how you make somebody like, I don't want to get jumped ahead of my sentence, but I remember watching the superhero movies like Punisher and um, all these different ones like Marvel had coming out and different movies like Die Hard because I mean, Bruce Willis was an icon, but I just remember thinking I would do sexual things. Like I remember thinking in my head, like I would do what was done to me if he would do my dad. Like I had like that actual phrase in my mind mm -hmm. And um, not knowing that I, at that young, attributed what was um, done to me, like not knowing that I immediately partnered with this belief system, like this is how you connect. Like it was, it really did become like a, a shift for me. And I didn't even really think about it till just recently so it's it's really cool that god's always taking away little layers not that we're supposed to navel gaze and constantly see the hard things of our story but it's just it's beautiful thinking like man like he will set you free from what you don't know sometimes and then when you look back it's not as hard to think about yeah. mm -hmm. and um so i had a, a mindset that sex 
at a very young age um, and sexual behaviors or letting people experiment with me is how I would keep a, ma a male or a boy as a friend um, because if I wasn't being called a faggot or whatever terminology was around gay Gabe, um, gay Briel, whatever, then, you know, I wasn't really worth it to anybody. Um, and, you know, when I go into high school, um, by this time I'm already convinced that I'm gay. Um, you know, I practiced coming out in middle school and that was really awkward because I would just record the same voice memo over and over on my phone. Um, mm. I remember just being like, this is just who I am and stuck because I stopped going to church and you hear about homosexuals going to hell and all this stuff and turn or burn. And the, the gospel presentation was literally limited to, if you did not know where you were die tonight, where you would spend eternity, if you were to die tonight, I'm sorry, um, then come down to the altar. But I never knew what Jesus did for me. I never knew that he became my sin so that I could have intimacy and fellowship with the father and become the righteousness of God. Um, I didn't know about the exchange of the old man on the cross for any life. And, um, you know, I was really afraid of going to hell because I also had like this Tim LaHaye lens on the rapture was going to happen tomorrow. And if I'm going to hell, I might as well hook up with a guy anyways. So um, I threw myself into um, promiscuity and, it led me down a darker road um, in 2012. Um, I get to a point where I'm suicidal and I get, I, I'm understanding that if I don't change, I'm going to end up taking my own life. And I dropped out of school. Um, I didn't really have a lot going for me, but what was really powerful is that I posted one day on Facebook, like about the need to change. Like I knew I needed to change and, I want, I, ha, I was pretty influential in the sense that in the music scene, now locally people could say a different thing, but I mean, I felt in my, <laughs> in my probably like narcissism that my influence was used to encourage people. And, um, you know, we, I had a decent following as far as for a band, you know, like in promoting local shows. So I wanted to encourage people to just be themselves. Anyway, I was using my Facebook platform, which back in the day, like 30 likes is a big deal nowadays like whatever but back then i swore that i needed to tell these 30 people that their life mattered and um to be themselves no matter what and i just said i want to change and i feel motivated and all this stuff and this guy reached out to me on a facebook post and um told me that the spirit of christ put that in me we hung out i accepted jesus in my driveway the fire of god fell on me i had no idea what that was just felt very crazy and I remember the next week I met my current pastor and I've been with him ever since. And I've had radical encounters with Jesus and he um, completely broke religion in the sense of what I understood it to be. Now there's ways that we can obviously be religious that we don't know that we are because it's not as organic, but um, completely broke off churchy Jesus the image of my mind and just showed me how he really does seek and save the lost and he cared for me specifically like he accepted me specifically and that meant everything to me and he didn't shame me he didn't bring up my attractions he like legitimately did not say how do you feel about being gay would you want to know the truth like literally he would talk to me about it whenever I wanted to talk about it and then most of the time I want to talk about it because it was like eating me up. So it was like this weird, mm -hmm. like you expect Jesus to talk about something, but like he knows how you're wired and he knows how to be a dad. So he'll talk to you about it if you want to talk to him about it, but he's not going to force the issue. And he was safer to me than anybody else like to come out to in that regard. So whenever I processed with him, um, I left knowing that he would manipulate me. Like he wasn't saying this just to get another person into heaven. Like he genuinely cared about my well being. And um yeah. I didn't super focus on praying the gay away. <laughs> I didn't try to pray the gay away. That wasn't even I knew from my sexual hookups that like I mean, just being real, like being used in a certain way, you know, like 
on the feminine side um, that this wasn't how my life was supposed to be. Um, I couldn't have kids. And so there were certain things that I was experiencing that I think the Holy Spirit would use to convict my mind that there was a different way. Um, and I just, when I, when I came into the kingdom, I just chose to not believe I was gay. Um, nobody said, you're not gay. It was just kind of like, I know this isn't who I am. And like, I was just really open to what he would have to say for me and how he would do that. Whatever, <laughs> you know, like I had already encountered him in a very supernatural way. So anything could happen at this point, you know what I mean? And if he can come like fire my driveway, I'm sure he can show me how I'm not gay. Um, and yeah, so that leads me up to here, went through a lot of inner healing. Um, you know, I just asked the Holy Spirit why I thought it was okay to be so promiscuous or what do I believe sex can give me that I can't get from him? And why is it so hard to trust men in my life? Why is it so hard to trust authority? How do I heal from rejection? You know, who really am I? And it was in that place that I learned that um, my testimony and my weakness are literally equally as valuable. Like both glorify God. They're both like the foundation of our discipleship walk. And that my deliverance from homosexuality wasn't my identity. Um, and even in my weakness and struggles, like they glorify him and give him a space for his power to be made perfect. So I would say like the last eight years of my life, has been truly discovering Jesus and like getting free from like my image of him based off of hearsay and common talk, but like learning relationally and um, it's changed everything. I'm married now, um, which y'all know. I a beautiful, that. beautiful a lady. lady that was born a month ago. My sweet little Jeremiah Joel. <laughs> and nobody farts more than that kid. It's beautiful. Well, there we he go. Is a is. gassy little man cub. He has hairy little ears. <laughs> He's the cutest thing, dude. I'm obsessed with him. Um, he's starting to smile a lot. And I see myself in him. And I'm just like so shook. And I'm like... I know there are times when it's just like so late and I'm emotionally spent where I'm like, God, you have got to stop crying, please. I need you to just <laughs> trust me that you're okay and sleep. Oh my God. But at the same time, it just makes you realize God is never annoyed by my need. Mm, and yeah. as much as I'm excited to help my son and be there for him, um, how much more is he that way towards me? Like, I can't think of anything that my son could do that would literally make me mad that I would just write him off forever. Mm -hmm. And knowing that like that came from the father is just mind blowing yeah. because you know, everyone and their mom, I mean, especially in church, wait till you have a kid, you're going to understand the word in a different way. I'm like, Oh my gosh, please don't ruin this moment for me. Like, <laughs> you know, but it really is real. Like you have to experience the love of God by sacrificial love. And it's a sacrifice being a parent, not in like a weird way. I'm not trying to sound like it's like, I know everything, but you really lose a lot of your own time giving yourself to someone, but it's worth it. And then you see the nature of God. So it's like a really natural God given way to die to self mm -hmm. and, and experience him. And it's just, it's been awesome. It's been really freeing. I would say the Lord used this last year of my marriage and even the coming of my son to help develop me mentally in ways that like sexual addiction had handicapped me. And so like it caused me to face reality and this the timing of the Lord and develop into more of a man and into manhood. And so like, it's almost been like part of established healing for me. Like the Lord had it for me, like to face this, to grow in responsibility, to be able to feel this so that my son knows he can deal with it. And so it's like, it's, it's a lot of like wow. healing for me, but it's also like 
still going down generationally to my son. It's a it's a crazy web of God what? <laughs> like I've been talking for like ever straight, so that's what we want. Mm-hmm. Praise God. <laughs> I I love when you you know, you were talking about letting go of the identity of being gay. Um, I'm reading a book called The Vertical Self by Mark Sayer right now. And he says this really profound thing. He says the the Christian life and the Christian walk is really all about discovering uh, the image of God for you. And the picture that he presents is God has a picture of who you are. And, you know, I often think of being in the image of God as just reflecting God. But Mark Sayers is saying, God knows who you truly are. And Mm -hmm. your whole life in the Lord is discovering that truth. Like he mentions the white stone in Revelation that God knows your name. And so as you walk out righteousness before the Lord, you learn who you truly are before God. And, And I mean, your journey is so much about that, like becoming the son of God that you are. <laughs> yeah it's uh that was actually a prophetic word that was given to me and and like the first six months of being saved i went on a mission trip to haiti and i was struggling it was when i first started noticing i was more aware because i was like sexually sober that i struggled with ocd <laughs> and um this person came to me and was like you know you're battling your thoughts and i just hear the lord saying this like chapter and verse of revelation and um i remember like he has a new name for me <laughs> like i'm gonna get this white stone dang it like i was so like i'm gonna endure i don't care and um yeah i think what you said is really key too because i think giving ourselves to how god particularly like, I want to word this without it sounding like thoughty. It's like, you know how like you see an image of Jesus and you feel like nobody presents him that way, but you want to, and you're like, Jesus is really like this. And it's like, mm-hmm. like it, that's what it makes you think about. Like, that's what he's forming in you, the image of him, like his facet in you. Like, that just like is such a real thing to me, but like hearing it expressed that way, I'm like, yes, yes, yes. Elizabeth for the win. She um, pulled that out of all of us. Well, you know, I, I, one of the things, Ken, you're going to have to break in. I'm just no, being talkative good. this morning. One of the things that I, I just have to say is, you know, as we, as we sit before Jesus, as we experience the love of Jesus, we get to see a facet of who he is. And that's a revelation, a revelation of his character. And in every way that we see Jesus, it gets unlocked in ourselves. So when we have a revelation of Jesus, say, you know, one of, for me, one of the most profound revelations is his compassion. When we get locked in with the revelation of that truth, it gets unlocked in our lives and we get, we get to convey and manifest that revelation to other people. So it's so vital to, to really see the Lord clearly for who he is and, 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 devote the time necessary to experience him so that you get to reflect those things. I love it when you share um, about the getting to know the voice of the Lord and how the Lord's voice kind of voiceover in your life has guided you. Can you share a little bit about that? Yeah. Um, I feel like I just got a word. <laughs> oh, well. Wow. Do Let's it. Do it. Let's have that. Yeah, I just feel like um, this is going to sound so Christianese, but I feel like growth coming out of the LGBTQ um, is definitely not normal in the sense of like, we could be adults or be, be re-experiencing puberty in the sense of like with our God-given sexuality. Mm-hmm. And I just felt like the Lord just showed me like, oof, this is like deep for me. And I don't want it to sound like it could sound so surface, but I feel like he's just teaching me how to breathe again. 
Like, I feel like he's really just walking me through and just knowing, like, I'm going to be okay. In the hardest of seasons, it'll never be like it used to be. Mm-hmm. And hearing that from him, not just as God, but as my father, um, and knowing that he's showing me how to breathe, like how to be, um, that is not something I'm supposed to like learn on my own or independently, but even in the stress of this year and everything that's going on, I think even in the process of healing as an overcomer, it's easy to constantly be chasing God by trying to do the right thing and staying in the lane of, of what he's freed us from. And like, I, I don't know if necessarily like we lose connection, but you know, I was processing with Edward last night and I was like, it, there was a subtle, very, 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 very subtle shift of when I trusted the Lord with like everything. I mean, everything. If he told me not to go after God, bye. Don't need you. Like, but when I experienced, you know, what I dissociated myself from to live in homosexuality, I just wanted to check out and kill myself. Like I could not sit underneath the weight of my own decisions, my own pain, my emotions, anything. And from there on out, it was like living with what I knew by, about God and then trying to manage my inner world. And it was like following the spirit or managing my inner world. And like my choice was trying to keep my hands on both. And in the process of doing that, it's like I, I just forgot how to breathe and just be still mm-hmm. and know that God is good. And um, I would just want to encourage anybody watching, parents included, um, to not miss the life of the spirit by trying to manage your inner world with what you know about God and to continue to be moldable, continue to be formed and not afraid of being hurt again. Um, Sometimes I feel like you can be free, but still have like a sorrow because of like, obviously we're on this world and the Bible says we want to be clothed with that, with that, that is immortal and eternal. Um, but I feel like um, sometimes it's easier to believe the sorrow than the hope of what we have. And I just feel like the Lord is just gently in that same place. It's just reminding us like, it's okay to breathe and mm-hmm. getting back to a normal rhythm of him as father. And, you know, deliverance is hard work. Freedom is hard work. It's not, I mean, people say like freedom is free and maturity is expensive. Like the whole thing in itself is hard work. You really just have to die. There is a continual mm-hmm. cycle of like life and death. You get free and then you realize there's more stuff to die from. And then you get free and you realize there's still more stuff to die to. And you get free and it's like, God, what am I? Like, I feel like I've killed the whole season of friends. Like, how many times do I have to die? But in that, there's there's a, there's a something that the Lord spoke to me. And this ties in because you guys wanted me to share about what the Freedom March was like. And this is something that the Lord was speaking to me about. It's just the power of a resurrected lifestyle. And like, this is the call of living in resurrection. Like we're going to go in seasons where we feel like we're just dead and the sorrow is too much and everything, but ever so gently, the father comes back in and shows us how to breathe again. And that sounds super spiritual and like a buzz phrase, but when the Lord kind of like puts that on your heart, you'll know what I'm talking about. Like you'll enjoy the simplicity of just knowing him as father versus so much so getting lost in the technicalities of what deliverance from sexuality looks like in this season or, you know, Mm -hmm. sometimes we get so technical on even getting free that like we overcomplicate his presence and we treat it like a drug more than just his personhood. And we we like, we want to feel the presence. You want to get free. And it's like, those are moments of intimacy where we can just breathe. And we can just sit. I don't even know why I'm talking about this stuff, okay? I really don't. So I love it. 
I love it. I, I, I resonate with everything you're saying in so many different ways because, um, I, you know, my, my flavor of brokenness was that everything I, all of my value would come from my performance. And so that translated right to spirituality, like God would be pleased with me or God would keep me if I performed. And so, you know, when you start then, you know, you, you come under conviction of your sexual behavior and you, you realize, oh, okay, I need to give this up. The only tools I seem to have in my toolkit were, okay, I'm going to work harder. Oh, I'm going to, I must have to really apply myself and strive and try to get an A. And um, like you say, it's like the Lord you know, all of the work, like you, you're right. I agree with you. It's, it's hard work. Um, it's just not striving that gets that gets us there. Yeah. It's you're right. It's, it's, it's the work of yielding. I would say it's the work of obeying, Oof. you know, it's the, it's the work of That's leaning okay. into a person instead of, Oh, I'm going to thank you for my assignment, Lord. I'm going to go over here and I'm going to work on what you told me. Like, no, no. No, he's going with me or I'm following him. And so. Time out. I, got, I feel like Elizabeth's getting ready to like spill like this deep yeah, revelation because this is something that was, is, she, she's like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> It's percolating. It's just like. I know. I yeah. see it. I know. But I, so I, I completely resonate with that. And I, you know, when I, when I um, disciple individuals, usually men, it's like, it's amazing how frequently, you know, we have to go back to, okay, now remember, you're not trying to decode your life by yourself. You're not trying to save yourself. You're not, you don't need to actually figure out how you're going to be okay. That's actually God's responsibility. Your job, like, like Elizabeth started to say earlier, it's like, and this is your story, uh, uh, Gabe, is how do I hear God? How do I be close to his heart? You know, Apostle John laying his head on Jesus's chest and having that kind of moment to moment relationship. Yes. And I feel like that's, I mean, I feel like that's what I get to learn in 2020, to be frank. It's like, while it seems like everything has come apart, you know, everywhere you look, it's like, oh, where is my safe place? Oh yeah. It's not in conquering homosexuality or in conquering anything. It's, it's in having a daily close relationship with the person who made me. It's just amazing how simple it remains. And yet we get distracted sometimes. Uh, that was prophesied. Wait, what was that? Yeah. Dave? That was literally just prophesied over me like the John leaning on the, oh. yeah. that's why I was shook. I was like, Oh my gosh, <laughs> this is so, is this deja vu? <laughs> like, um, I had a train of thought, but I lost it. But I really want to hear what Elizabeth thinks about that, what I just shared, because she's deep and I need deep. <laughs> well, I think uh, what immediately came to mind for me was um, when you said the need, let's breathe. The Lord's saying, it's okay, you need to breathe. And, and I just thought immediately of Adam receiving the breath of God, just being filled with the spirit and and the reality that, you know, in the Greek, spirit is breath. Like our concept of spirit is likened to breath and breathing. And so life in the spirit is so vital. And as Ken knows, I mean, a major part of my restoration process was in what I call an irresponsible look away. And what I mean by that is the Lord had me look, spend considerably more time looking at him than looking at my faults and looking at my failures. And what I discovered is that our, our vision of wholeness, what we can see of the truth of who we are and the truth of who God is, will restore us without an unnecessary look at ourselves. I'm, I'm not saying that we don't observe our weaknesses and we don't engage responsibly towards our failures, but honestly, God's vision of who we are if we behold that and we lock in, we will become that without focusing too, on the, too much on that brokenness. I mean, yep. 
I'm not disqualifying counseling or other things, but I just know that when I can see what God sees in me, I become that. And the more I become that, um, those other things fall away without my energy. Um, and I, you know, I feel like all of us are invited into seeing this place of wholeness. And then when we hit a ceiling, um, like when we can't engage the thing that we know the Lord has promised us, because we live by his promises. We don't live by the law. We live by his promises. And so um, that's the point when we dig deeper and we invite the Holy Spirit to unlock healing or we go after living waters or some other counseling. It's, it's when we hit that wall. But otherwise, we go after Jesus and what he's showing us and who our identity is, and we will get whole. Um, but like you said earlier, we, we tend to get fixated on the darkness. Um, we become captivated by our weakness. And in a kind of a self-protective way, we focus on those weaknesses trying to, trying to make us stronger. But in reality, they only make, it only makes us weaker. So we have to focus on the strengths and what God is promising for our lives in order to enter into those things. <laughs> oh, this is so good. I feel like I'm getting drunk. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh my Why God. is that so dude, there's such a flow. I feel like this is a very prophetic flow for somebody watching. Mm -hmm. This is a very Rama encouraging word. Like, okay, first off, this might not even be how you worded it. I'm so excited I'm spitting. You said, don't be so, you said, don't get fixated. Don't try to grow stronger by being fixated on the darkness. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Oh my gosh. What? Okay, if you, don't, right. if you hear that and you don't meet God, I'm sorry. Like, excuse me. That is, in, that is literally a word from God. That is a rhema word. Period. That's on period. Like that just took me in, girl. Ooh. Jesus is in this so car with funny. me. <laughs> I mean, that really just hit oh, so man. deep. Like you it is so easy to disconnect from the Lord and think you're connected to the Lord when you're walking in darkness. You know it's that first John one. Mm -hmm. Like if we say we have fellowship with him, but walk in the darkness, then we're not telling the truth. Like we should leave fellowship with him, believing that we can become what he says about us, not more discouraged about what we see in ourselves. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, I just, we, I have to say this again. If you could today, anyone who's listening, if you could today shut your eyes and imagine who God is saying you will be, who will you be um, when you no longer have the cult culture's definition of you or the identity you've created for yourself? Um, but when you're actually walking in righteousness and, and the truth of who God sees you as, if you can begin to imagine that, it will set you free. So good. Wow. I just feel like prophetically scales are coming off of eyes. I don't know if who's watching. I can't see from the zoom, but if you watch this live stream, I'm telling you right now, I just saw a vision, even in my own, like mind's eye, whatever terminology you want to say. And well, my spiritual man's eyes, there we go. And um, it was like, part of me was afraid of envisioning what I could become because I was afraid of disappointment. Yeah. But I saw this wow. black cloud go away and it was like, mm. I saw myself as this charismatic, goofy lover of the Lord Jesus, but free from insecurity and what people thought. Like I can be free from the mm. fear of man. I, and not mm -hmm. in the sense of like, I could care less if anybody loses my freedom, but there's still a measure of, 
disappointing maybe the ones you love or leaders you look up to or whatever it transfers because it just does that's just the nature of whatever that's the second well, that's, opinion verse three well, that's, so oh um, that's awesome um but i mean that's one of that's one of the huge blessings of homosexuality is you get to get free from fear of man super deeply because yeah. you've you've been mocked so much you've been labeled and misunderstood and you're you you've learned to use fear to protect yourself moment by moment so like i i you know i if i stand this way or if i don't do this or if i you know appear this way then my might navigate life without more pain and you know if at some point you let all of that go and and you know that's yeah freedom is on the other side i, I that's one reason i wouldn't trade this struggle is because i had so much fear of man i couldn't breathe <laughs> to go back to what you were saying and now i just don't care you know it's like i'm so glad i don't care it's awesome you know i feel like the lord wants to even add to like the prayer prompt that um elizabeth was saying sorry i'm like in two places at once <laughs> but it's almost like the lord wants you to envision what you can become while you're aware of your dysfunction and like i just felt this gentle invitation of like i want you to know that i'm aware of the things that you hate about yourself but i want you to still believe it's possible mm-hmm. like it's not some like wishful thinking he's like i want you to be fully aware of what what you think is broken about yourself and i want you to know that you're going to become what i see you as well even you might be aware but you're still going to become this you have permission yeah. to become this fully mm-hmm. faulty as you see yourself because it's by my spirit mm-hmm. you know what i mean yeah. like there yeah. the thing that you believe is jack about you is literally the open door to becoming that because it's what he died yeah. for it's yeah. like definitely it's not a closed door it's like you have permission to embrace your jacked up self and believe. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yep. And it's the spirit, like you said, it's the spirit within you that actually activates it. It's the spirit who works it out. Like as you agree with the Lord's image for your life, mm-hmm. it is the Holy Spirit that forms that in you. Um, the creative power of the Lord as we breathe. Mm. Um, yeah. I, I met with a man just the other day and he was so disillusioned. He was struggling with homosexuality and he was so disillusioned because he had tried for years all throughout middle school and high school to really pursue the Lord and to have a relationship with the Lord. And then, but the Lord never changed his desires. So he's so disillusioned and he comes to realize or he, what, what in our conversation I'm like, okay, so all of these, all of these works that you're doing, like everything you just described to me that you were doing to try to have a relationship with God was on your side. Like it was all, all of this effort. And it's like, you're wearing yourself out. Was anybody coming alongside you and saying, Hey, I see your mess. Did you know that God loves you right in the middle of your mess? Did you know that he's wanting to be close to you and he doesn't need you to clean yourself up in order to want to come, come near you? and help you and it was interesting it actually the fact that he wasn't able to receive god's grace for him has caused him to feel like he doesn't have a relationship with god and that god's not speaking to him and i said well i actually think god was speaking to you just you had a lens for what you thought god would say to you and it didn't fit that so you didn't hear it he was actually trying to say i have grace for you come unto me all you who are heavily laden right and i'll give you rest and it's like I don't know how many people are out there right now watching this that it's like, you're so tired of striving. You're so tired of trying to work something up or do it right for God. And it's like, you know, and you you all jump into this, you know, Elizabeth and Gabriel, but he's, it's like, he's got open arms, open hands. He's, he's looking at everything that's going on in 2020 and in your life. And he's like, I got this, you know, I, I, I do messy all day long. He's been dealing with the human race since the beginning. So, you know, this is, we get to come as we are. He's not, he doesn't need us to do anything. He has so much grace for us. I, I just think of blessed are the poor in spirit. 
And yeah, I think God is looking, you have favor when you acknowledge you just can't do it yourself and yep. you need him to do it. And he does. He's so faithful. He just needs you to acknowledge that you can't and he will. He's so faithful. That's it. That's it. Um, That's it. I just, I feel like, man, this is like really hitting me like really deep. Yeah. Like, it's a very like, I feel the life of Jesus on this conversation. Mm -hmm. And it's like literally making me like perceive him in like around me. Like it's like kind of intoxicating. But in that, like, I just felt like the Lord even wants people to know like temptation. Just, like we treat temptation as like concrete sin. Like temptation is already separation from God. And so like, I was just discipling somebody today and it's like, bro, I was like, stop trying to pray your temptations away. Like ask the Lord to not lead you into temptation, but temptation is not sin. Like, right. do you ask God to take away your desire to lie when you're in trouble? Do you ask God to take away your anger? Do you ask God to take away any other thing that he would do? And it's like, no. And so it's like, if it's not, when the opportunity comes for you to choose a same sex and choice, why not just ask the Lord what is appealing about it? And I was like, what do you feel whenever you act out? And he was like, I feel like shiitake mushrooms. And <laughs> I said, then you don't want to do it. You're doing what feels easy. Why don't you just, like you, temptation does not mean you can't be intimate with him. Mm, and okay. he was like, you know, I have not th thought about that. I'm like, God, why do I want to look for daddies? God, why do I, what is it that a butt can give me? God, what is it that this man's penis is promising me? What is it that I feel I can't get from intimacy? And then when I realized, and I was talking to him, I was like, man, I had a thing for daddies. You could not tell me if I saw a Middle Eastern man that was covered in hair, you could not tell me there was something better. But the moment I realized that it was because I thought I wasn't manly, when I realized that I had an issue with male authority because of my father wounds, that I masturbated because I can't deal with my own pain, that, that pissed me off. And knowing that I don't even feel those desires when my relationships are in check, hello, like something ain't, something's not like clicking in me as far as identity, like this isn't who I am. I don't want to do it because of how I feel after. And whenever I am believing right and, and my heart's right, I don't even have a desire for it at all. So it's a temptation right. to pervert what you need that's healthy. Mm -hmm. If that doesn't frustrate you about the temptation, you know what I mean? Like you have to understand that temptation is an, is, is an attempt to sabotage you and come out of the lie that temptation for same-sex desire um, is going to meet a need. Like you have to see like, Yes, like you're going to this thing for an emotional need and that is not sinful in the sense of like what's behind it, what the need is, but it's to sabotage you. It's to make you want to hate something about yourself. It's to make you hate your body, um, whether your it's body. lusting after a man with a better body. You know what I mean? Like there's something that it comes yeah. with. It doesn't ever just give you what it's presenting. It comes yeah. in with mm -hmm. God isn't going to meet you here. Here's a really hot mm -hmm. guy but God doesn't care about you when you're anxious. Here's a really hot guy, but God doesn't care about this. That's really what he's tempting you with. That's what he's yeah. asking you to bite. Yeah. <laughs> Gabriel. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm so glad I know you. Yeah. You're amazing. You are amazing. I'm so glad I know you all. <laughs> you, know, you're, you know, you're a living example, Gabriel, that you, know, you, you find yourself in a super broken place like you shared with us. But when you, when you follow God and you stick with God, you come out of it with so many treasures you wouldn't have had if you hadn't had to go on that painful mm -hmm. journey. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, like, yes. it's, a, it's such a blessing to the world now that you know God so well that you, you have answers for people that don't deal with this. You have answers for all kinds of things that God has deposited in you. And I'm just so proud of you. You are, you are such a, a beautiful representation of Jesus in the earth. I, I just is so proud of you. Thank you. 
we could talk to you for another 30 or 45 minutes without question. <laughs> looking at the clock yeah. and just realizing, wow, how did all that time pass? Um, it, yeah, just it to say, like you know, the truth is, like you've said, you and Ken, is your temptations are an open door to discovering the truth of who you are if you'll allow the Lord to guide you through that journey. Every, every temptation we have is an opportunity to grow nearer and more purified by the Lord. And um, we tend to just shut them down or, or stuff them down. But the Lord is inviting us to be stronger and by engaging them with him. And so um, such a powerful, powerful journey. I mean, life with the Lord is, it's so incredibly good. I mean, it, it makes going through hard things, you know, you go through a hard thing and you know that there's gold on the other side. You know that there's something purer, better, more profound, more hopeful about life when you go through hard things with the Lord. And so, you know, why don't you, Gabriel, pray over everybody who's listening? Um, and we should probably continue this to another time. <laughs> Yeah. Father, I just thank you for giving us um, just the freedom to breathe today, to not be fixated on the darkness, but to believe that we can become what you say about us, not by striving or our own works, Lord, but literally by love. Father, I just ask right now that you would come in and remove disillusionment out of every heart. Lord, people that feel like they're about to break because they can't imagine this outside of it being something that you have to work for. Mm -hmm. Lord, I just ask that you would fill their cup again. Yeah. Lord, I thank you that nobody that hears this or watches this have to go back to a broken cistern to mixture, to things that don't satisfy. And God, I just plead your blood over the conscience of people who feel like they've muddied out your grace, that in visiting our true nature, envisioning our true identity in you, becoming image bearers, oh, we already are image bearers, but growing in your likeness that it's impossible. God, I just plead your blood over the consciences of those, Lord. Lord, that there'd be no more tossing around. Um, and Father, that people would be settled. Father, I just ask for um, your peace just to remain. Lord, the same way that we apprehended you and experienced you just in conversation, Lord, I just ask that um, this would be, this would not <laughs> lift. Lord, you don't go anywhere, but our awareness wouldn't lift when we just get done scrolling off of a phone that we'd realize that you are still close, that you still care, that you're wanting to do business with us, that you're wanting to interact with us, that you're wanting to relate with us and commune. Father, I just ask that we would feel the ease of handing over to you control and panic when we see the parts of ourselves that are scary. Um, and Lord, just that we would behold and not dissociate that we would see rightly and not have to run or that in keeping our eyes open that we would see hope um, even bigger than the intimidation and father i just ask right now lord um that hearts um would just be rekindled to you surrender to you um in the fear of the lord Lord, that you would raise that up in us, that we would not neglect this friendship. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Gabriel. Amen. I just want to pray over you really quick. The Lord, we just, we just bless Gabriel and Madison and JJ. And Lord, uh, we speak protection around them and security around them favor in this season, uh, prosperity, 
-hmm. And we just thank you that 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 little family is growing and prospering and that all your needs are being met. And Father, we just pray for increase. We ask for more. Yeah. Heart's desires fulfilled. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thanks for watching. For more info, head over to our website, listen to our podcast, or find us on social media. And remember, change is possible.